I have no better guest to bring on yeah. to basically keep it cool, keep it calm, play the long game than my friend Mike Rashid. Now, before I bring this guy up, okay. let me explain who this guy is. This, I think, how, is this third time of the show? Fourth time of the show? Maybe four. Okay. Third? Mike Rashid. Live like a lion. Yeah. Entrepreneur. Businessman. Fitness guru. Just an all-around badass dude. I think the first time we had him on the show, dude, he was knocking out this bag. I think he challenged Jake Paul huh? to a fight. I think he's taking Jake. I think so, too. Anyway, please welcome the show, Live Like a Lion, the one and only Mike Rashid, Woo! ladies and gentlemen. This way, this way. My God. Thanks for having me. All right. Mike Rashid in the house. In the building. How you feeling, man? It's technically not a house. It's a building. It's a building. It's a, it's a what do you HQ. think about the building? What do you think? It's incredible. You already, you already know this is an incredible place when I think yeah. about it. Especially the back room. The little boom boom room. The boom boom room. It's fire. You know, they say there's no sex in the champagne room. What? I don't know anything about any of that. Chris Rock. Good. I don't know nothing about none of that. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> anyway. Um, how you been, man? What's new in your world? I've been good, man. Uh, finishing touches on a book that I've been working on for some time. Um, uh, it's a framework of a religion that I'm launching, hmm. a philosophy, a way of life. It's very modern, very practical, something that people need. It's a solution to a lot of the issues that people are having. And it's a, it's a direct pathway to, you know, real sovereignty for each person who adheres to these principles that I'm uh, uh, suggesting. So that just business, growing my community, you know, we're we're uh, positioning Ambrosia for a nine-figure exit um, in the, in the near future, and that's it. Just stand true to who I am and conquering conquering this world, conquering life. Now I, I heard you say something. I don't want to gloss over this. Did you say you're launching a religion? Correct. All right. <laughs> okay. All ears. Explain. Yeah, basically, it's called the uh, Infinite God Body, right? And the principle behind it is, you know, the human mind creates, literally creates all reality, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, people have been stripped from and separated from divinity, like true divinity, right? If you look at scripture, like Yeshua, who they say called Jesus, he proclaimed that he was God or he was of God. And he told people, ye are gods, right? In scripture, God says to people like, y'all are gods too, right? But nobody grows up thinking that, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks that they're special, right? People have, uh, they just take on this cloak of humility, of uh, being small, being meek, right? They've been programmed to have a slave morality, right? And the people teaching them the slave morality happen to be people who are religious figures, leaders, right? Because if you look at the history of the world, the, 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 the kings of religion, mm -hmm. the kings of government, they're all in cahoots. They're all hand in hand, right? So, and typically people in these high positions don't want anybody challenging their positions. They don't want people smart, right? Think about the American public. You know, it's power in numbers, right? Mm -hmm. United we stand, divided we fall. But people are divided, and that's by design. They don't want people being collectively strong. They don't want people being powerful, right? Because it threatens their position. But I think that that's not, I think that that is a nefarious way of maintaining your position and being rich and being wealthy and being powerful. Listen, the most sustainable way of being rich, being wealthy and being powerful mm -hmm. is being uh, useful, is providing value and helping people. If I help somebody, they reward me. They, yeah. they compensate me, right? Mm -hmm. So there's two types of master moralities. On one side, there's people, there's kings that will keep people in a, a, a state of like darkness, mm -hmm. of ignorance, of fear, right? And then there's another king, a master morality, kings of that, that will ascend to their levels by being good people and also by helping people, by teaching other people that they are gods that they are of divinity, right? So that's what this whole thing is about. If you look at religion, no knock to religion, I think religion is very necessary mm -hmm. because people essentially are animals, right? And people need, some people need to be told, 
don't do this, don't do that, stay right here in this line. Mm -hmm. You need that for order. Of course. However, w things need to change, right? You haven't had a new, a new book in 3,000 years, right? Why are things not being modified and adjusted to 8 billion people being in this world right now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you look at 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, maybe a million people, maybe, right? It was not densely populated. It was a completely different planet, mm -hmm. different ideologies. And if you keep the further back you go in history, right, up to a degree, people lived very savage. Yo, you mm -hmm. lived in a time when there had to be a Ten Commandment. Yeah. Like, yo, this is the safest time in world history. Yeah, yeah. This is people are living longer than ever. The, the, yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. So as civilization advances, we have new things. We have things that people had no idea can exist back when these books were written. Mm -hmm. So we need a new book, right? So this is not this is spirituality in its finest. And when I say spirituality, is very practical things. Things like <laughs> Working out every day. Mm -hmm. That's a spiritual thing that you could do mm -hmm. because that's taking care of this divine vessel that you have because mm -hmm. it's all you got, mm -hmm. right? And is placing responsibility on each person, right? If I am my God, that means I'm my devil. If my life is hell, it's my fault, right? So the moment you start blaming everybody and putting everything on everybody else, you're, you're just, you're, you're giving away your power, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling people to be powerful, to be mighty, and that's what the divine God body is about. The book is called, I'm sorry, the infinite God body. The book is called the divine quintessence. Mm. The quintessence is, is the, the sacred scribe. So I'm going right. to ask you a question on Nat. I, I'm Nat's getting a little bit closer to her Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you have some, some questions here. So I'm taking notes because I'm learning. By the way, mm -hmm. we talked backstage just for a little bit, for like five minutes, saw some of your guys. Mm -hmm. We didn't get into any of this. So I'm genuinely yeah. <laughs> learning this for the first time. And right. I'm, I'm all ears, bro. Yeah. Here's my first question regarding that. There's a religion, mm -hmm. right? Then there's people that are like, no, nah, I don't really believe in religion. I'm spiritual. Mm -hmm. Basically, like every girl I've ever dated, I'm spiritual. And then there's like a way of life, right? Religion, spirituality, way of life. What would this be more closely to? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call anything. The, the principle behind all are the same. A person that's religious, mm -hmm. a person that's spiritual, mm -hmm. and a person that wants to adhere to a way of life is typically to find some form of salvation, right? Mm -hmm. It's typically to like have a good life. Yep. It's typically to be happy. So I don't care what you call it. It doesn't but matter. The, the thing. <laughs> but but yeah, go ahead. One, one thing, Adam, sorry to cut you off. But no, good. This is, the, this is what I want to address. These, these are the things that I want to address. Mm -hmm. People are are adhering to ideas and ideologies instead of reality, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have yep. a distinction between religion, way of life, and spirituality, you, you're missing the point. It doesn't matter what you call it, as long as you are doing the things to live a good life. You feel me? I don't care what you call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, well, that's spirituality. Like, okay, you're right. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's religion. Yep, you're right. As long as you're doing the things, that's all that matters. and when you look at quote unquote religious people, mm -hmm. you don't have that, right? You have people adhering to ideologies based on their interpretation of said scripture. Mm -hmm. There's no nuance, there's no common sense being used. Matter of fact, scripture is at the mercy of each person's interpretation. Just because your pastor said this means X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. it may mean something to you if you read it. Correct. It may mean something to you, different to you if you read it, right? Mm -hmm. Because your understanding of things are going to be different based on what you know, mm -hmm. based on where you are, physically, geographically in the world, but also where you are just in your life, right? Mm -hmm. All of these things matter, but nobody reads. You know how many times people argue with me about scripture? I'm like, I know you don't read it because it mm -hmm. doesn't say any of that, right? Mm -hmm. Or it says this and you leaving this out. So people don't read. People have the idea of religion. People are born into whatever religion. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you're programmed something from birth and they're telling you, if you go against this, you burn in hell forever, mm -hmm. you're like, no, nah, I'm here. I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I was a kid, I had mad anxiety about going to hell. I'm like, yo, huh. I got to ask for forgiveness every five, five minutes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. what, so, what was your religion at birth? I'm a Muslim. By, by born, faith. Okay. Yeah. But... 
I, it was so, like, it was pushed on me so literally, like, everything, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have friends, adult friends, that take so many things as literal. I'm like, mm-hmm. so you mean, like, literally? They're like, yeah, Aki. And I'm like, all right, that's what's up. Mm. I'm not going to argue people off of their, their box. Yeah. Listen, it doesn't matter. Your path is your path. And I, I'm not going to tell anybody they're wrong, right? So, the, um, by the way, mesmerizing stuff, mm-hmm. I... I fully agree that there's, on one hand, an ideologue, mm-hmm. you know, and on the other hand is sort of a pragmatist. Listen, ideologue is like, no, I believe this is what, and the pragmatist is like, no, nah, this is what we're dealing with right here. Mm-hmm. Um, you were born a Muslim. Mm-hmm. You know, I have conversations with whether it's Muslims, whether it's Christians, whether it's Jews, it's like, you know, they all, it's the Abrahamic religions, right? Um, how literal should you take the Bible? How literal should you take the Quran. So for instance, you know, it's funny because I've never, <laughs> I've read the Torah. Mm-hmm. I had a comment. Shout out to Danny back here. Who's a, is a, is a, is a follower of, of Jesus is what he calls mm-hmm. himself. Also my friend Ruslan who sent me some, some stuff. You're going to laugh right now. I didn't fully realize that the Bible is just the Jewish Torah with the 200 more pages. It's like, I opened it up the Bible Mm. Um, and it was the first 800 pages. I'm like, yeah, this is this is the Torah. This all is the books three of Moses. books. All three books yeah. have the same uh, foundation. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then it was just the, the New Te- Old Testament, New Testament. Mm. So here's my question. So I would get, I would have conversations with people and say, so there's a the story about Jonah and the whale. You know this story? Mm-hmm. That Jonah apparently lived in a whale for a little bit. I'm like, yeah, bro, I don't know. Jonah's hanging out. Okay, in a whale. so I'm asking you this: How literal should you take? What does that scripture? mean? What does that mean to you when you read that that story? What did it mean to you? Um, that specific story about Jonah and the yeah, whale. Yeah. Uh, I'd be remiss to tell you I knew exactly what that story was because once I hear a dude's living out in a whale, I'm like, yeah. All right, bro. What about you, Nat? Um, I think like you said, it depends on the message and where you're at. You know, for me, I that story is someone is locked in a space mm. where they're not able to get out. Right. And so that's the base of that story. That's mm. what I get from that. Right. So and I'm not yeah, I'm sure there's a lot like we can really have a conversation on what you just said. Mm-hmm. Like what does that actually mean, right? Mm-hmm. But that's the key though. That's what no one does. Mm-hmm. They doesn't no one like uses any logic and any reasoning like what does this make sense i mean what does this mean so for instance jacob right Mm -hmm. he wrestled with the divine figure right and he did such a good job the divine figure anointed him with the name israel what does that mean what does that mean to you that story abraham isaac and jacob Mm -hmm. right jacob's ladder Mm -hmm. climbed his way to heaven Mm -hmm. um you know it's biblical times um, are the foundation of culture, tradition, life. Mm. Um, In general, here's the way I look at it, to maybe give a macro perspective. Um, You can either get closer to God, closer to the Bible, closer to those stories, or further away. Mm -hmm. What I'm not an advocate of, speaking of ideologues, are extremists. Some people are like, this is the way it is. That's the way it is. Set it in the book. And the, the, the other extreme is, oh, I don't care about any of that. The Ten Commandments, mm. the rules that we've always abide by, tradition. So for me, it's finding a balance of where this should be in your life. Mm. And there's a point, you know, I'm a pretty moderate dude, which we're going to talk a little bit in a sec. Mm. Um, I'm sort of always hovering in the middle. I can do this. I can do this. But as you trend a certain direction, like I was trending, I was reading books like Richard Dawkins, Mm -hmm. God is not good. I was like, as you go down this path, it's like, how is this benefiting me? Like I see Mm -hmm. Bill Maher who does religious lists Mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, I don't really hate religion. He goes, hold on. Ah, Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that helps you. So I'm gravitating a lot more towards belief. Mm -hmm. So the Jacob concept, I don't know how literal I take these things, Mm -hmm. but I want to take them a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... How I took it, it was like an internal struggle, uh, one's own personal jihad, if you will, mm-hmm. of going to war with your lower nature, mm-hmm. right? And that's a very hard fight. It's a divine right. fight, right? And this man fought it, and he was awarded mm-hmm. with, with something beautiful, right? So it's nuanced. It's like, hmm, what does this mean to me versus it being taken as literal? Mm-hmm. Because here's mm-hmm. the thing. These, like that... Like, say, for instance, the Bible, Old Testament in particular, was written in Aramaic, a language that no longer exists in Hebrew, right? 
PBD actually speaks that. And yeah. Vinny. And there Literally. is there are no there are those no Christians. there are those languages Arabic. There are no direct translations for a lot of the words. Yeah, mm-hmm. a, a lot, lot of gets the phrases, lost in translation. No a doubt. lot of the the characters in the, in the in the words, right? So you're not getting exactly what whatever they were trying to communicate. For one, mm-hmm. for two, for two, you have what's called canon, the canon Bible, right? Mm-hmm. The canon Bible. This book is supposed to be about. Yeshua, right? And I like to use proper terminology because mm-hmm. it, it matters, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know who Jesus is, right? I don't know who this Jesus guy is, right? But Yeshua was you call the guy. him Yeshua. He was the man. It's supposed to be about him. Mm-hmm. Very little of the book, if you really, re- really read it, is about him, right? The Bible, you're saying? Correct. Mm-hmm. And the people who actually executed him were the people who crafted the, the Bible, Bible and took a lot out and put this in. You feel me? And they also added extra things in it to appease their people, the Romans in particular, to make that transition from pagan to monotheism, mm-hmm. to keep their traditions in there so they were, it was comfortable for them, right? Because there's things in the Bible, well, not in the Bible, there's things in Christianity, for instance, that have nothing to do with anything. Like Christmas has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. The tradition of Christmas has a lot to do with other cultures Pagan. that were contrary to the teachings of Yeshua. Mm-hmm. Easter have nothing to do with the man. It was counter what Yeshua taught. Well, you feel with me? consumerism and merchandisism mm-hmm. and capitalism gets infused to religion. All of this is bad. Let's right? sell some Easter All eggs. of this is bad. Yeah. All of this is bad. So anyway, what we are uh, uh, bringing about, right? People can believe whatever they want, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter to me, right? Belief is is to attach yourself to a notion that you don't know is true or not. Mm-hmm. That's fine. I don't think that's logical, but it's okay. Whatever makes people happy. But what I'm trying to do is nothing but placing forward practical things that people can employ into their lives. Mm-hmm. And if they do it, they will ascend into their real God energy, their God mm-hmm. body, do their you have God a, culture. A, a Ten Commandments of... The infinite no, no. God body it's or anything not, like that? This is not to replicate these things. Oh, no, your own ten. This it could be two it's, commandments, it's just, ten commandments, five, I mean, six. No, no, because I didn't, I didn't like model it after that. It's mm-hmm. its own unique thing. What are the foundations of it? What are the fundamentals? The, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's a thing. Yeah. But the main thing is this, right? It's simple. <laughs> Life's what you make it. The main thing is life is what you make it. The main thing is it has everything to do with the human mind creating all reality, literally and philosophically, right? Mm -hmm. Because your life is a sum total of all the decisions that you make. Yes. Mm -hmm. It has nothing, your your wins or failures have nothing to do with me. It's everything to do with you, right? Mm -hmm. So, and this is what I'm giving people. And once people really understand that and accept that and let it, like take that seed and plant it and Mm -hmm. let it grow, Mm -hmm. if you're wise enough, you're gonna live a good life because you're gonna do the things to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do the things to make yourself uh, a valuable word you are. You're going to do the things that make yourself healthy, to make yourself wise, to make yourself powerful, mm-hmm. all of the things, right? Women will align themselves with intelligent, strong, powerful men. Men will, you know, reciprocate and men will, you know, rise into that divine masculine to, to qualify themselves for these incredible women. The, it, the amalgamation of the divine masculine and feminine will, will permeate and it'll be a better place. It will be a better place. There are, uh, I do have a lot of solutions to the problems of our modern society mm. in the book, right? Listen, we live in a wild place. Mm-hmm. It's wild. We live in a way that is not, look, all right, our programming is to, um, to pass on our, our DNA, our genes, right? Mm-hmm. Our, our create progeny so that our, our species can survive. Mm-hmm. But what we're doing is contrary to that. How we are living, mm-hmm. right? We're going to wipe ourselves out. It's going to happen. You feel me? It, it's, it's so many routes, it's so many ways, so many things that we're doing that's going to wipe us out. Animals don't do this. Now we may look at animals as simple and uh, they don't have uh, uh, you know, the degree of consciousness that we have. They don't have the neurons or the frontal lobe, but they're not doing things to wipe out their species. Hmm. We are. So hopefully we can, you know, this book, maybe not in my lifetime or my kid's lifetime or whatever, but somebody's gonna be like, you know what? We're really fucking up. Let's employ this right here. Right? I have every specific things in the yeah. book 
uh, about different problems. One more question, because I I, I want to cover a few other topics with you. But okay. you said something earlier. Mm-hmm. You talked about the concept of jihad, you mm-hmm. know, which is um, Arabic for the struggle. For yeah. And I've heard right. multiple different things. Is this an internal struggle? Is it an external struggle? Um, not my not my position to basically try to define that. But you're mm-hmm. a Muslim. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a god. Okay, I want to understand that you're saying you're a god. A demigod, you know, people say, what does that mean? Is it heaven on earth? In in the, the, the Christian church, the Catholic church, if you try to leave the church, there's something called the excommunication. Mm-hmm. In Islam, there's a term for, I don't know, it's Sharia law, whatever it is. When you leave the faith, do you still consider yourself a Muslim? Calling yourself a god? How does this basically try? Like, what would uh, Muhammad say? What would Allah say? Mm. Explain this to me. And what would Muslims if, say to what you're saying? You, if y'all believe in God, Mm-hmm. And submit to the will of God. Y'all are Muslims as well. That's all it means, right? I'm going to always be a Muslim because I will always submit to the will of Allah, to the will of God. That's the will of nature. That's the will of the flow of all things straight away. A plant submits to the will of God because a plant, it, it, it has chlorophyll. Mm-hmm. It receives energy from through photosynthesis and it grows. It gives out oxygen to us. It takes mm-hmm. in carbon. That's, that is merely being a Muslim. That is merely the submission to nature. So I'll always be that, right? People that are not that are people that do things that are like change their genders. You're not submitting to the will of nature. You feel me? And not to pick on those people, but I'm just saying that's all it means. It's not some crazy thing. I got to do this ritual to be this or that. Mm-hmm. It's just a word, right? So anyway, um, so yeah. Uh, what was your other question? No, how, what do other Muslims say to you when they hear you say stuff like this? I say, I'm a, peace God. They say, peace God to me. I recognize them as a God. I'm giving them their respect. The ones that know who they are, right? Listen, you read, read your scripture. If people read scripture, they would all be speaking like that. They don't even read scripture, right? People, and now here's the thing. Yeshua was killed partly for multiple reasons, but one of them, he was at odds with the religious uh, factions that ran things at the time. Pharisees. The, the Jewish believe. Pharisees. Yeah. And he was at odds with the the occupying uh, government of Palestine, which was Romans, right? But one thing that the religious Pharisees did not like was him calling himself a god mm-hmm. and telling people that y'all are God, ye are God, ye aren't ye all gods? You know what I'm saying? So they had to get him out of here. What does that mean, right? That can be symbolic and that can be literal. What he's telling people now, there's a lot of nuance in there. There's a book. There's a what's considered apocryphal gospel called the gospel of thomas which has 140 teachings of yeshua why is that in the bible is weird but anyway so there's a lot of nuance to how he was empowering people right mm-hmm. but you just see in the bible he's saying he's god and y'all are gods right what he's doing is a lot more than that he's teaching he's educating he's leading the way and showing people how to tap into their divine nature mm-hmm. right leading living by example okay so they didn't like that just like anybody of note, like one of my spiritual fathers, uh, Minister Farrakhan, he's, he's banned from this. He's banned from that. He's mm-hmm. labeled a racist. He's labeled an anti-Semite, right? And he's never done anything negative to nobody. He, the sum total of his life is not producing violent people, is not mm-hmm. drug scandals, is not infidelity scandals, right? He raised was real conservative people real spiritual people, real people who know who they are, they love themselves and they love other people, that's all he's done. But what they do is these, these figureheads or these, these people, these quote unquote gatekeepers, they wanna silence people like Yeshua, like my minister, like other people who are truth tellers, they don't want them out there because they don't want people hearing that. Look, Malcolm X, he was fine until white people started listening to him. Nah, shut him up. Get him out of there. You know what I'm saying? Martin Luther King, you have this image of Martin Luther King like, oh, like, we shall overcome. And nah, he really woke up and he started speaking some real truth. They got him out of there. It was more what they would consider radical. And it wasn't super peaceful, right? Get him out of there. They don't want that. JFK was on some real shit. Get him out of there, right? This is, and look, here's the thing. We now have the Freedom of Information Act to where we can see like, oh, yeah. The government put this stuff together, right? The, and the government's always put these things together. But people are so busy, they're so convoluted, they're so 
enthralled with TikTok and in their phones, yep. nobody gives a shit. There's UFOs floating around and nobody gives a fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're, like, you, you, you're like, okay, that's cool. I know, I'll never forget, next... before we move on to the next topic, dude, yeah. you're so deep. I'll never forget when I was doing stand-up, I owned a comedy club down in South Beach next to Odega. I remember this guy get on stage, weird looking dude. Uh, white guy, lanky, pasty. And was he's he an like, alien? Huh? He's an alien? I don't know. <laughs> he goes, I gotta tell you. He had like this kind of like Dave yeah. Chappelle squeaky voice. He goes, let me tell you something. I could land on the moon seven likes. This girl does a thirst trap a million likes. That's a fact. People, are like, your priorities are all out of whack. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting concept right there. Are you coming to the vault? Oh, what's the vault? You know about the vault? The vault is the ultimate event for entrepreneurs to level up their game and learn from the best in the game. Last year, we had Tom Brady and Mike Tyson. And I said to our CEO, Patrick Bet David, I said, how are we going to top that? He said, how are we going to top that? How about The Rock? So this year, Patrick Bet David went out and got Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So he's going to be there along with PBD, The Biz Doc, and me. Yeah, if you want to join us at the Vault Conference, check out thevaultconference.com. It's going down in West Palm Beach, September 4th through 7th. If you want to make more money, improve your business, and expand your network, you have to be at the Vault. We'll see you there. Oh, you like that? Well, if you want to see more of that, check out this clip right here. And if you want even more, check out this clip right here only on the Southcast.